Welcome back to another Worm Week video, the week-long special that puts Shark Week to shame. Today's video will be looking at the world's weirdest worms, five of the weirdest, strangest looking worms that we could find for your viewing pleasure. Worms by their very essence are weird looking animals already, and as previously mentioned in other videos this week, the name worm doesn't really refer to any sort of proper classification of animals, which leads to some even weirder animals being called worms, which is great for this video. We've got some annelids, some echinoderms, and some this word, but they're all called worms, so that's good enough. But without further ado, here are some of the world's weirdest worms. First up, we have the squid worm, a worm that looks like a squid. The name may be simple, but it's probably the best description of this worm. Squid worms are annelids and belong to the class known as polychaetes, also known as bristle worms. Almost all polychaetes, including the squid worm, are marine animals and live anywhere from the surface of the shallowest seas to the deepest hydrothermal vents. Squid worms don't live in hydrothermal vents, but they do live in deep ocean. Typically, they are found around 2,000 to 3,000 meters down in the ocean zone, putting them in the bathypelagic layer. They were first discovered near the Philippines. Philippines, so it's rather safe to assume they live around there. But the ocean is a big place and deep, so it could be assumed that they live in other places beside just the Philippines. Probably the most interesting part of the squid worm is its squidiness. The name comes from the ten tentacle appendages that protrude from its head resembling a squid. These appendages are actually the same length as the rest of the body and are presumably used for feeding or some sort of sensory purposes. Talking of feeding, these squid worms have some of the most disgusting diets out there. They feed on what is known as marine snow, essentially dandruff of the ocean. Marine snow is the small floating particles of dead skin, fecal matter, mucus, dead plankton that float down from the upper levels of the ocean into the deeper parts where the squid worm and other detritivores can eat it. The reason it's called marine snow is probably self-explanatory. The disgusting bits of white snow float down like little snowflakes in the water. The flying buttocks is probably the worm most likely to get this video demonetized and age restricted. As you can probably see, the flying buttocks worm gets its name from the fact that it looks like a flying buttocks. Like the squid worm, this is also an annelid and a polychaete, so it does indeed live underwater, which I suppose is what allows it to fly, as it certainly can't fly in the air. If you're wondering how on earth this worm is an annelid, due to the fact that what makes an annelid is their clear segmented bodies, then you may be surprised to learn that this worm's body is actually segmented. It just happens that some of the segments are very, very inflated and others are not. This is what creates the clear lines around the buttocks. They are simply other segments of the worm that are not inflated. These worms are about the size of an acorn or hazelnut and to be honest, kind of look like them. They dwell around 900 to 1,200 meters deep in the ocean and were first discovered off the coast of California. Just like the squid worm, these worms also feed on marine snow, using the strange little appendage at the center of the buttocks to do this. They have sometimes been observed to produce a bubble or cloud of mucus around their mouths at the center of the buttocks. It is thought that the mucus helps capture marine snow, which they can then eat by swallowing the mucus again. You may be sensing a pattern on how these worms have been named, and of course this worm is no different. It is named the Medusa worm due to the many tentacles on its head that constantly move around in a snake-like fashion, resembling the snake hair of the mythical Greek monster Medusa, though this worm won't actually turn you to stone. This worm is quite different from the previous ones. It is not an annelid and is not a polychaete either. This worm is an echinoderm, and technically not even a worm, but a sea cucumber. However, worm is a rather loose term, and so we apply it here. Medusa worm tentacles are obviously used for feeding and sensory purposes, and they will move around sort of like an anemone to pick up small particles of food in the water. They are also used for defensive purposes. Hermit crabs enjoy feeding upon them, having the soft tissue that is easy to eat through, and so the medusa worm will sense an impending threat with its tentacles and release a toxin into the water around it. Interestingly, medusa worms are extensively used in aquariums, as they can help to filter the water and clean the tank. However, what many aquarium owners must know is that their defense mechanism is very, very sensitive. It is not uncommon for a fish to simply brush on one of its tentacles and cause the medusa worm to release its toxins into the water, potentially killing any other creatures in the tank. Finally breaking the mold of being named after what it resembles, the zombie worm does not in fact look like a zombie. It gets its name instead from its feeding practice, which I'll delve into in just a minute. Zombie worms are actually a genus of around 15 known species, probably even more, who all exhibit the same sort of breeding behavior and therefore are very deserving of their name. This genus brings us back amongst the annelid phylum and they are also polychaetes, just like the squid worm and flying buttocks. So onto this interesting feeding practice that the worms get the namesake from. Zombie worms feed upon the rotting bones 
bones of whale carcasses. These worms stick into the bones of whales and secrete an acid that breaks down the bone leaving just the proteins and fat that is usually trapped within the bone. They can absorb these nutrients right into their digestive system. They do this because they lack any sort of mouth or teeth. Once absorbed, they can't actually break down the proteins and fats themselves. Instead, they have a symbiotic relationship with a strain of bacteria that live inside of them. The bacteria break down the fat and protein ready for the zombie worm to then use. Obviously, as they feed on bones of dead whales, they usually dwell on the ocean floor, deep down in the abyss. They still require oxygen to live, however, and without mouth or gills, this can be hard. Except they do actually have gills, they just don't look like what most people think of gills. The feathery plumes they possess are their gills. They create a large surface area to extract as much oxygen as they can from the water. When threatened, they will attract these feathery plumes into their bodies to keep them safe. If you don't think these worms were weird enough, there is one final piece of weirdness. All the zombie worms you see feeding on bones are all females. You will never see a male doing this, and it's actually very hard to see a male. That is because males are far, far smaller and actually live inside the females. Hundreds of tiny males will thrive inside the females, and their only role is to be there to fertilize her eggs. The female then releases her fertilized eggs into the open ocean so that they will hopefully find their way to some sort of carcass to begin feeding off. Finally, we have the tiger flatworm. This isn't the weirdest looking animal on the list, but it just happens to be the last. Tiger flatworms are clearly named after the tiger stripe markings and the fact that they are flatworms, also known as this word. Again, the term worm doesn't really refer to anything specific, and therefore these flatworms are worm enough for this video. Tiger flatworms are bottom dwellers and therefore live in shallow warm seas such as the Caribbean and off the coast of many southern states in America. They feed almost exclusively off tunicates, marine invertebrates that grow on other surfaces underwater. They are common in warm shallow waters of Florida where many tiger flatworms are found. Flatworms by their very nature are really weird animals, both not only in the way they look, but also how they breed. You may be familiar with penis fencing. In the case of flatworms, penis fencing is a behaviour in which some species of flatworm will fight to inseminate the other member of their species with their sperm. This works because many flatworms are hermaphrodites, possessing both a penis and sperm, but also eggs. The aim of penis fighting is to make sure they do not become the mother as they are put at more risk when laying eggs. Tiger flatworms, however, do penis fencing completely differently. They have a consensual penis fight in which they freely trade sperm with another tiger flatworm in order for both individuals to benefit from having some genetic variation in their offspring. This trade can, however, go sour, and it's been observed that sometimes one tiger flatworm will try and trick the other into giving it the sperm and hold back on their end of the deal. In this case, the partners will split and find someone else to mate with. Well, that does it for the five weirdest worms I could find. You may have noticed that they are all marine worms, which is actually completely unintentional, but I think it goes to show just how weird marine life can get. There are a few honourable mentions that aren't included here, due to the fact that we've already done videos on them. The hammerhead worm and the Antarctic scale worm. But you can go and watch those Animal of the Week videos right after this. Be sure not to miss Ben's Worm Week video tomorrow on the Mongolian death worm, a cryptid worm from, you guessed it, Mongolia. But if you would like to learn more about worms, their history, and the wonderful worms that surround us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it and if you'd like to see more from us.